Welcome to Tech Art Academy. I've got some exciting news. DaVinci Resolve 18.1 just released and there's a lot of awesome new features and there's a few that I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna start off by showing you how to download it. So you just come to the DaVinci Resolve page as normal and then you have to go to the support page. So it took me, took me a second to find it but you just click on here and then click on support. It released yesterday. There's some information on it. You can read about it if you want. There's forums for it. I'm using Windows, so I'll just click on Windows here. You can either choose to register or you can just click download only. So I'm gonna do that. So it looks like it's just over three gigabytes. Blah, 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 sell your soul, accept. That's probably what's in that contract there. All right, it's complete. All right, it's booting up here. Um, and this is just going over everything that's new in 18.1, kind of just a nice little overview, but we'll be going into more depth in all of these. I'll just cover the overview real quick, and then we'll go into more depth on each of these. So individual timeline locks, which makes it a lot easier if you're collaborating. DaVinci AI voice isolation. This one um, specifically is pretty exciting to me. I think it's a game changer, and we'll get into the details of that. Audio editing improvements, um, Fairlight automation and vector keyframing, and a timeline grid. These are all tools that make certain editing tasks a lot easier. YouTube render options. You can review renders and select custom thumbnails, so that's pretty nifty. And then vertical resolution support for other social media like Instagram and TikTok. Automatic dialogue leveler. This makes Audio mixing, way easier. Enhanced subtitle tracks. You can view this stuff in real time, so that's pretty exciting. And then, of course, like I mentioned, the performance boosters is gonna be pretty exciting. All right, so let's open it up. Okay, so the first thing I wanna go over is the performance improvements. So according to Blackmagic Design, their engineers have been going over DaVinci Resolve and really working on the code to streamline it and increase performance. So they've done an overhaul of the entire application to make sure that each aspect of it is now significantly faster. So with 18.1, the text plus playback is up to 10 times faster, which is a huge improvement. And then for the face refinement and stabilization, it's up to five times faster, which not as fast as the other one, but still, that's a huge improvement. And then for the object removal analysis, you can experience up to three times faster than in version 18. And with the noise reduction, it's up to four times faster, specifically for the spatial noise reduction performance. And the temporal noise reduction is now up to 30% faster. So overall, it's a huge improvement as far as performance and speed goes. That's just the performance increases on their own. Even without all the new features to make this process faster, just the overall performance is going to save you a lot of time. So I think this is a, a great upgrade to version 18. Honestly, it's kind of crazy how much they've updated just from 18 to 18.1. DaVinci 18 is already an awesome application, but all these additions are a huge improvement. They're not just uh, some little scraps here and there, I mean, it's it's really, honestly, a game changer, and I'll probably keep saying that, but, it's, but that's just because it's true. The next thing I want to cover that we saw briefly in the overview is the improvement to the timeline. 
before 18.1, when he made a project, everything was locked into the bin as a whole. It made it harder to collaborate because you couldn't have individual ownership or flexibility as much with the with the old process. All the timelines that you were working with used to be locked into the bin. So you can see how that could be difficult when you're collaborating. If you only want to lock down a single timeline, you wouldn't be able to do that. It would lock down all of them. But that's been improved in 18.1. So now you can lock or unlock each timeline individually. Specifically, it locks only the timeline that you're currently working on, and that just makes it a lot more flexible. It helps with organization too, because say you want to have all the timelines organized in the same bin, but you still want to be able to have multiple different editors um, working on different timelines, you can do that now. I haven't found a reason to collaborate with other editors yet, but just so you're aware that that exists in the cloud, you can pull in a project and then you and another editor could be working on the project at the same time. Kind of like when you go into Google Docs, um, everyone has their own separate color and you can see who's doing what and it can track the changes and who's making them. So that's what it'll look like and it's a, a pretty nifty feature. All right, so the next thing I wanna go over are the social media upgrades. So They've essentially added in templates and settings that make it easier if you're working on social media platforms. So if you want to do TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, Snapchat, things like that, you have the ability to set up your project specifically for those types of videos. So you would come into the settings and then you have the ability to set it up from here how you want it. So you can come in here to the project settings and make square or vertical setups. You can also make it so that it's your default settings. So if you come over here to the three dots, you can click on default preset. Set current settings as default preset. So say you wanted to do square, you can do that. Just click that. Or you can save it as a preset so that way Every time you come in, um, depending on what type of video you want to make, you can just select the preset that you want. So if you d did want to do a square video, then you could select, you know, save that as a preset square video and then come in here and click that and your whole project is set up that way. That just makes it way easier so you don't have to come in and always be adjusting settings. You just have your presets saved in here and then rotate through them depending on what you're making. So that's a neat feature. In addition to that, there's also some other improvements, specifically when it comes to social media. If you go to the delivery tab, you can see that there's different setups here. You know, you've got YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, a lot of good stuff here. Um, that just makes it easier. And then you could also come over here to file, quick export, and then you can see those options here as well. So you get those same options, but the, the thing here is th this existed before 18.1, but now with the new setup, just when you go in the delivery, you have all that plus extra stuff. And not only do you have extra stuff, but for the ones that already existed like these, you just have more control as well. There's more options um, for you to customize whatever you're trying to do. So that's all really convenient. If you're dealing with social media and just as an example you can change the frame rate the codec the profile which um, increases or decreases the video quality stuff like that is just useful also you could upload directly to YouTube and then once you select that it also gives you the option um, to select the title description all that good stuff, chapter chapter markers, and you can even upload the thumbnail directly from inside DaVinci Resolve. It just really streamlines the process for you to do everything in here. These last two changes are the big ones, I think, because before you had the ability to upload directly to YouTube, but you didn't have the ability for the thumbnail, so it was kind of like not as useful. Honestly, I wouldn't use it before, but with this improvement, I might actually use it and just make it more streamlined. Because before, even if I could upload directly to YouTube, I would still have to 
go in and do the thumbnail. So it was kind of like, well, I if I'm going to have to do that anyway, I might as well go into YouTube itself and make sure it's done there. But now you have the ability to add the thumbnail and you have the ability to preview it before you send it out. So that does streamline things, make it easier. And now the features that were in here before 18.1 make more sense because it's more complete. And so there's a lot better chance that people will use that, I think. All right. So the next feature is probably the one I'm the most excited about. It's, there's actually two of them. Um, there's voice isolation and dialogue leveler. And voice isolation helps to get rid of the background noise in a clip. Um, I can show you an example of that real quick. The example that they showed was pretty cool. Crowd noise. Traffic. Aircraft. Explosions. You only need to enable voice isolation in the inspector and the Neural Engine AI instantly recognizes and isolates the voice. Crowd noise. Traffic. Aircraft. Explosions. With a stir fry, really is an absolute plethora of, of options really for you. Um, today we're going to do a vegetarian one. A stir fry really is a, a... So it's a really cool feature. And this is the thing that I was actually the most excited about. I think it's the biggest deal. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. One of the hardest parts about recording is getting the audio right and when there's all this crap in the background screwing up your take um, it can be really hard to clean it up and sometimes a lot of the time you just can't save it and you have to do it again and hope that some other background noise doesn't mess up mess it up and there are third-party tools that can do that but usually it takes a lot of work you know hours and hours of work and then sometimes even after everything you can do you just can't save certain things there's just no way to salvage it but with this from what I've seen so far it's insane. Um, clips that are just totally destroyed are usable right after applying that. So I really want a chance to use it. The only problem is it's only in the paid version and I didn't realize that at first. Um, a lot of people were asking questions about it so I just want to clear it up. That feature in particular is only available in the studio version which is the paid version. But the dialogue leveler is available in the free version and that definitely helps. Um, another thing that can happen when you're trying to record audio is all the levels can be messed up and you have to do multiple takes. And so in some takes, you might be further away from the mic than in others. And then all the audio is just off and all wonky and it helps you to level it out. So everything's even, which is really helpful. So that's still a really cool feature. The other main feature that we saw in the overview is upgrades with Fairlight. There's actually a lot of upgrades here but I'm not gonna go into all of them. Mainly, there's more control in Fairlight and there's live previews. So here you can see that you're able to map all the audio controls to a custom setup, which gives you a lot more control and just makes it a, a lot more flexible. And then the live preview makes it so that you can see the text in context of the thing that you're actually working on so you can choose what fits best. And there's a lot of other little things. I don't know a ton about Fairlight, so I'm not gonna cover all the little details, but I can point you to a resource here at the end of the video. So the last main feature that we haven't covered yet is the subtitles. There's quite a few changes to the subtitles. There's more flexibility in terms of font, scale, and positioning, which will make it a lot easier to have stuff that looks professional um, in terms of subtitles. And then also there's templates, which will be nice. Um, or I think they call them presets though. Either way, it's kind of the same thing where if you have a certain style and size and, and positioning and stuff that you want to keep, then you can just save that and then set it every time for every project you're working on. And an example of where that would be particularly useful is in like a series. Um, and then there's some other, there's some other details that I'm not 100% sure on, but you can look over the documentation if you want to get in the details of that. 
So let's do that next then. Like I said, I didn't cover everything because there's just way too much to cover. But if you want to get here, it's just the home screen like usual. You can click on that and then go to the support page like I showed you earlier. Come here and then you can click on read more. And then here it'll give you all the release notes on all the new features and kind of give you a better idea of everything that's in 18.1. So if you're feeling up to it or if you want to know um, more detail on the things that we didn't cover, then you can just come here and read through everything. All right, let me know in the comments what you think, what you're most excited about. Um, this is Tech Art Academy signing off. Have a great day and stay educated.